All right, thank you. And uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so thank you, lady, for the great energy before, before this talk. So I'll try to maintain that good energy level going forward. And I'm going to talk about a few QKD deployments that we have been doing in Europe and in Asia. And um, the first thing I'd like to, to say is um, we, we've, we've been going on a, on a quite impressive and interesting journey from testbed to commercial deployments over the last few years. And this is all about protecting sensitive data and digital infrastructure. But more importantly, also, it's looking at how you can protect people in society in general. And um, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but if you read the news these days, you see how critical and important it is to protect uh, data and infrastructure because um, people are, are, are very close to their infrastructure and depend very much on the infrastructure. So it is critically important to keep an eye on how we protect infrastructures in general. And when it comes to digital information and digital infrastructure, um, cryptography in general plays a very important role. And what we've been trying to do is to make sure that the quantum cryptography can be part of the conventional quantum uh, communication networks. And that was a there was a lot of effort put in trying to make sure that this new technology is directly usable. Uh, in a standard communication network. And you will see examples of that throughout, throughout my, my talk in the next few um, slides. Um, I'm going to give you some examples of deployments in South Korea and also in Europe. And just on the right-hand side, you see the different equipments that, are, that have been used and are, are used today. They are the IDQQKD systems, and basically they are different models that have different performance and characteristics for long range or metro uh, network areas. So they have different performance adapted to the different type of applications. Uh, now, the one, the first case study that I'd like to talk about is what has been doing in, in Korea over the last past few years. It, it started in 2019 where, when we did the first uh, uh, case study with SK Telecom uh, looking at securing a 5G network uh, and installing about 330 kilometers of QKD link between Sungso and Dunzan. And um, that, that was the first um, deployment in Korea, totally uh, successful. And that basically set the, the scene for what has come afterwards, which is, which is actually massive. Uh, what happened actually in 2020 was uh, the pandemic. And the Korean uh, government decided that it was a good, um, that was going to be important to have a stimulus package for the economy in Korea. And they decided to, to launch several projects um, to, to stimulate the economy and allow new technology to be used and implemented. And the result is that between 2020 and 2021, 1,000 kilometers of QKD links have, that have been installed. And more recently, there's a new project which is, uh, which is going on, started in 2021. It's called the G Project. Grégoire briefly mentioned it yesterday, and I'm, I will um, also say a few words about that project. Now, if you look at the New Deal, um, so this, this is the stimulus package decided by the government in, in 2020. Um, this is actually divided in three parts. Uh, there's one part which is called the Green New Deal, there's another one which is a Digital New Deal, and the last one which is an Employment Safety Net. This represents about 42 billion euros in projects in the next uh, three, four years, and there's a hope to create about a million new jobs through that uh, stimulus package. So it's massive. And um, as part of the digital deal, which, which is the one we are interested in today, it, it is actually divided in, in different application use cases, both in the public sector and in the private sectors. So you've got a list on this slide that gives you an idea of what kind of um, environment and what kind of applications we're looking at. We're looking at protecting 
some governmental um, communication, uh, some water. Uh, the water service is part of the utility in Daejeon and power plants. So this is looking at securing data communication and access to these um, uh, utilities and, and, and services. And in, a in the private sectors, these are, there, there are several hospitals that have now QKD installed to exchange information. Some industries uh, uh, like Pyongyang Motors, uh, another hospital where the biometric information management is secured by QKD. Mm -hmm. And another one, which is ADD CAP, which is basically a surveillance system that has been developed and is now being installed. And I'm going to focus on that one, on the last one first, because it, it includes several of the technology that were developed uh, and installed in Korea by ID Quantic. So this is a this is a, a, a system that was developed by um, IDQ in collaboration with the SK Shielders. And the idea here is to take the data from intrusion detection system, CCTV cameras, and all, all other um, systems, safety systems. The data is going to a data center, and then from the data center to the control center, the, um, the link is secured using QKD. Uh, on top of that, you've got um, an access control which is secured using a, an auth a very a new and innovative authentication system, which is basically a, a card like this one. I, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a, it's a card that includes a, a QRNG chip and you've got a fingerprint, fingerprint reader. So when you actually go on site, you insert this in the reader, read your fingerprints, the fingerprints, is encrypted using the QRNG key and then transferred to the system. So you've got a fingerprint uh, authentication system which is completely secured. So that, that is a, an additional level of safety that requires that was required for that control center um, access uh, systems. Um, so it's called the FIDO card and um, this, is, this is now deployed in other, in other area in Korea. And together with the QKD system, you have a, a complete and comprehensive solution to secure um, CCTVs and uh, intrusion detection systems. I'm moving to the next examples that I wanted to talk about, which is the, the G project. This is uh, the name of this national convergence network project that was uh, started last year. It's, it's a massive um, network which is basically looking at making the link between 48 government organizations. And what you see schematically is a representation of the backbone that links the different uh, government organizations together. And that covers the, the, pretty much the whole peninsula of South Korea. In yellow, the yellow dots represent the SKB regional office, SKB being the uh, the operator that was um, we, we, which we, we selected, which we worked with for the installation of the QKD links, and the triangle, the blue triangle, represents the government general uh, regional office that needs the, um, the secured access. And uh, also, what you see on the diagram is the um, the, the the green lines that represent a, a software layer that was developed that runs on top of the of this to manage the key, um, key exchange uh, between the different uh, systems. So there's, a, there's an additional software layer that was developed uh, dedicated to that project, which is quite uh, innov innovative from that point of view. Uh, so this is, a, this is a large project. Eventually, it's going to cover uh, 2,000 kilometers of, of distance. Now I'm going to move, I'm going to Can you hear me? Mark, we can hear you again. Hello? Hear you again. Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, my, the line dropped apparently. 
so I was I was just saying that we're we're coming back to Europe with the European Open QKD project, which is a an initiative from Horizon 2020, uh, the flagship, and um, this is a this is a very large project which is looking at deploying quantum key distribution test beds across different sites in Europe. Um, as IDQ, we we have been selected um, to provide 16 QKD links out of 25 in Europe. You see on the map on the right hand side how they are distributed in in Europe, and um, the, the learning on these different um, cases were, were quite interesting for us and for the users as well, because it, it allowed them to test the implementation of, of QKD uh, for, for us to develop also installation procedures that could be done remotely. With the pandemic, everything had to be done remotely in some cases. So some new tools and, and uh, procedures were, were developed for that purposes and also some software to make sure that you have the right uh, KMS system that allows interoperability with different uh, systems and also SDN compatibility. There's some standardization work that has been done as well. Um, so I'm just going to scan through a, a couple of these examples. So here you have a list that, that shows you the different domains where the um, QKD uh, tests have been uh, have been installed and executed over the last past uh, two years. Some of them are still ongoing, by the way. And uh, you see in the telecom, medical, critical infrastructure domain, um, public domain, and finance as well. So I'm just going to take uh, two or three of these examples and, and focus on, on, on some of the uh, interesting things of, of these case studies. The first one I'd like to talk about is a is a use case that we did with fintech startup Montpellier, and this is looking at securing the digital um, assets transfer and, and storage. So assume you have some blockchain technology and you want to store your your assets for for a long time, for good actually. And um, one way to do that that was um, there was developed here in, during that uh, project is to use Shamir's secret sharing to store part of the keys in different um, data centers. So the, the original key is uh, generated by using a QRNG chip, and then th this private key is split in five different fragments that are all transferred and stored in data centers using QKD. So you have a perfectly safe communication of these uh, fragmented keys, and none of them contains um, the information which is, uh, co contains the information that will allow you to uh, retrieve the, the private key. So you have a perfectly safe uh, system. The learning on that one is, uh, first of all, it was much faster in terms of distribution and recovery compared to multi-party uh, computational schemes. Uh, we're talking about seconds versus um, several minutes. And from that point of view, it is very scalable. So this is something that you can, that you can very quickly scale and store uh, a lot more digital assets using that architecture. So, so that was a, a good validation of a value proposition uh, and a business model that is to be uh, further used and uh, exploited. The next one is, is the transfer of large um, patient data between hospitals. So in this case, in Austria, you have a, a university hospital that performs some medical analysis on patients and they want to transfer uh, data, videos, images, uh, reports, and everything to uh, another hospital. And obviously, this the data is very critical. It's um, it's it has to be kept secret, and you want to make sure that when you store that information and transfer it, you don't you don't lose and you don't risk uh, uh, that uh, an eavesdropper will will access the data. So here again, the idea was to use Shamir's secret sharing. Um, using four fragments this time. And because if you use that approach, 
one of the fragments is is you know if if one is lost it's not it's not um you don't lose the the total information and because of that you can actually use a, a, a cloud system and you use QKD for the other uh, different uh, communication. And um, so together with Fragmentix, which basically develops the, uh, the, the, the approach and, and the uh, software to, to manage the whole Shamir secret sharing, uh, that was developed, installed, and, and used for about a year in Austria. They did a lot of stress testing to see if it's uh, robust, and it was it was demonstrated to be totally successful. Uh, so that's that's a great example of securing patient data uh, for the long term. The the next one is another example in Germany this time, and where you have um, power stations and um, overhead power cables that are. Uh, between between two different uh, locations. These locations are in remote places. They're not necessarily protected. The optical Mark? fiber optic are included Mark? in the... Yes. Mark, can you uh, please wrap up? There's only one minute left. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this is just uh, on, on this one. There's a, an OPGW uh, overhead lines that has the fiber submitted to large temperature swing. And, and vibration and the QKD was uh, successfully used in that um, uh, in that uh, arrangement without any problem. So that for us that was an important demonstration that this is a uh, reliable in in a difficult and challenging environments such as this one. I'm just going to uh, say a few words. So this is the Euro QCI network which is being built starting in 2022. This is Europe uh, cybersecurity strategy for the coming decades. Uh, and um, this is a massive network that is being built. And stay tuned for more information on, on that project. The last thing I'd like to, to say is, first of all, these deployments and these case studies have demonstrated three things. The first one is the system and QKD in general is compatible with, ex with existing fiber optic networks. It's completely transparent. You can install it and uh, it, 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 it absolutely it is absolutely no problem with the existing data communication. So that's a, that was a, a very important uh, learning. The other thing is uh, we've been able to develop and provide comprehensive solution that can be installed um, in a very simple and straightforward way that includes QRNG for key generation and encryption and QKD together with comprehensive software suite for key management. And also, we've been able to demonstrate that it's reliable and user-friendly, and it is, and the performance have been validated in different, very different environments, as you could see. So with that, I'd like to end my talk, and I thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, and let's give him a big hand. Um, there's unfortunately no time for, uh, for questions, but uh, it is a, a very good oversight of what's happening because testbed is hot, it's burning, and it's, it's out there. And especially for, for companies like uh, IDQ and many others that are active in this area, it is a perfect way to connect. Thank you so much.